Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I have to tell you, um, I have had some morning, I know the devil was trying to stop me from getting here as well, as the gentleman said earlier. Um, I had to actually, I got all the way to Athens, had to turn around and go all the way back to Madison County and then come here. So, but I'm here, praise the Lord. I made it. Um, I want to talk to you about something that the Lord gave me. Um, it's called, um, if I had to put a title on it, it's, it takes a stretching to get a blessing. Um, you know, when you're growing up, you're always told that you have to stretch before a workout, before practicing for a game or playing a game. The older we get, our muscles and joints tend to um, become less flexible, if you know what I mean. Um, in the same way, we must also remember to stretch spiritually as we grow in the Lord over time. When we stretch spiritually, it always has to do with our faith. God wants us to stretch our faith. Um, in Hebrews 11, Paul lays out a list of people in the Bible who demonstrated their faith in powerful ways. Hebrews 11:6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Um, we enter into our Christian experience with the Lord through faith. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Um, faith is powerful. Matthew 17, 20, he replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have Faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Yes. Nothing will be impossible for you. We can pray with faith and see mountains in our lives cast into the sea. Just like physical stretching, spiritual stretching is not easy. Stretching requires us to push beyond our normal level of comfort. Have you ever watched an MMA fighter? It's stunning to see how they can just effortlessly swing their foot over the head of their opponent with no thought at all, but you know it took the, that fighter years to stretch those muscles so that he could get to that level. And it always pushed him behind, beyond his comfort level. Sometimes when it gets a little uncomfortable or it seems to be taking too long, we throw our hands up and give up. God wants us to keep on stretching and keep on moving forward. He wants you to stretch your faith today. He may want you to do something. He may want you to stop doing something. He may want you to give something. He may want you to say something. He may want you to stop saying something. Amen to that one. <laughs> God may want you to sell something, buy something, uh, start something, or end something. It just, it just depends on, you know, the season you are in your life. Uh, God may want you to love someone. He always wants us to love people. There are countless stories in the Bible of God calling people out of their comfort zones. And with each and every one of the stretching brought blessing they'd never imagined. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Abraham. He trusted God for the child he was promised, despite his and Sarah's advanced age. His faith stretching ended with a little baby boy in his arms named Isaac. No matter how long it takes, we must continue stretching our faith. James 2.23 says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Jesus' disciples feared for their lives when a violent storm threatened to sink their boat. But Peter's faith to step out of the boat at Jesus' invitation resulted in Peter's Human feet miraculously walking on water. Uh, Matthew 14, 22 through 32 says, um, this is kind of long, but I want to read it because it's very, it's very good. Immediately he directed the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he sent the crowds away. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was already a long distance from land, tossed and battered by the waves. For the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, which is between 3 and 6 a.m. Now think about how dark it is at that time of night. Jesus came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him, they saw him in the dark. That's how much light was off of him. Walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately he spoke to them saying, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter replied to him, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the effects of the wind, he was frightened and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus extended his hand and caught him, saying to him, O oh, ye of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind seized. And those in the boat worshipped him with awe-inspired reverence, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. 
no matter how stormy our lives' waters may be, if we just step out of the rocking boat and focus on Jesus, he'll stretch our faith to walk all over those stormy waters right into his calm and loving arms. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we will not know how stormy it is around us. As long as he looked at Jesus, he did, it, didn't, there, it, wasn't, it didn't matter what was going on around him. It just mattered who his focus was on. Jesus told a crippled man with muscles weak to get up and walk. That's John 5, 1 through 9. Later on, there was a Jewish feast festival, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, which is called Bethesda, having five porticos. In those porticos lay a great number of people who were sick, blind, lame, withered, waiting for the stirring of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down into the pool at appointed seasons and stirred up the water. The first one to go in after, after the water was stirred was healed of his disease. There was a certain man there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus noticed him lying there, helpless, knowing that he had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to get well? We have to want to be well and get well. The, the invalid answered, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am coming to get into it myself, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet, and walk. Immediately the man was healed and recovered his strength and picked up his pallet and walked. The man stretched his faith as he stretched out his legs. He stretched his legs, he stretched his faith, and he walked for the very first time. Sometimes we may not feel like getting up from our crippled place and walking, but if we just stretch our faith, stretch our broken and battered bodies, we'll be able to walk in victory. And on and on it goes. A blind man who had faith to believe Jesus could heal saw Jesus with those same eyes. Joshua may have felt ridiculous circling the walls of Jericho seven times, but eventually the walls came down. Some of us need to start circling and dancing around those walls in our lives. And don't stop until our faith has been stretched for that wall to come crumbling down. We may look crazy sometimes when we praise God or dance before the Lord, but call me crazy all you want. I will come out on the other side of that wall with victory and deliverance because I was willing to listen to what God said, and I am crazy enough to believe that he will do what he said he would do. When God bends us, he'll not break us. When he stretches us, he won't snap us. Our lives and faith is won or lost in the stretch. It is in the final stretch, the home stretch, that our final destiny is determined. And if we have not properly stretched, we may pull up lame and never make it across the finish line. Patience is more than endurance. A saint's life is in the hands of God like a bow and arrow in the hands of an archer. If you think about it. God's aiming at something the saint cannot see. And he stretches and he strains, and every now and again the saint says, I cannot stand anymore. But God does not heed. He goes on stretching till his purpose is in sight, and then he lets fly. Trust yourself in God's hands. Maintain your relationship to Jesus Christ by the patience of faith. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Many times we want to take a leap, but we fail to realize that if we ever expect to flow and move gracefully along our road to our destiny, we must stretch first. Sometimes it hurts, it can be downright hard, but we have to go through it. You may feel like you're already ready to move on to the next phase, but your deliverance and breakthrough will only come after you've been stretched. Feeling uncomfortable yet? <laughs> God's just stretching you before blessing you. Hold on, your shift is coming. I know it may be rough, but if you can stand to be stretched, you can stand to be blessed. When Jesus healed the man with the withered hand in Mark 3, 1 through 6, he simply told the afflicted man... Stretch out your hand. In verse 5, the Bible says he stretched it out and his hand was restored. I want you to pay attention to this. He had to stretch out his hand in faith because even after Jesus spoke, his hand was still shriveled up. There was no visible change until he stretched it out. In Hebrew, in Hebrew the word withered is zeros, which means dry. It is the same word for dry land. In this context, however, it denotes one area of the body being deprived of its natural juices, leaving it shrunken, wasted, and withered. For so long there was no blood flowing to this man's hand. It was dry and deprived of what it needed to thrive. But when he stretched out his hand in faith at the Lord's command, restoration took the place of deprivation. Whatever your zeros or dry, or dry place may be, God will restore it. No matter how long you have been deprived of what you need, change is coming your way, but you must be stretched first. Through your trials, troubles, and difficult circumstances, God is up to something. No, he is not on a mission to destroy you, but yes, he is stretching you. Why? Because the stretching comes before the blessing. 
Do you remember when God told Moses to stretch out his rod over the Red Sea? Exodus 14, 26 and 27. Well, the children of Israel had an expansive body and water in front of them, and Pharaoh and his army chasing them from behind. It didn't look good. It seemed like they were trapped. But Moses obeyed God. He stretched out his rod, and that's when God stretched out his hand and parted the Red Sea. Moses, just like the man with the withered hand, had to do something first. Think about Genesis 22:10. After God committed Abraham to offer up his only son Isaac as a sacrifice, the Bible says Abraham stretched out his hand to slay Isaac. As agonizing as this may have been, Abraham still stretched out his hand and his faith because he had already believed God before and God had moved, so he knew that God would move. At that moment, the moment he stretched out his hand and to go up, the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham from heaven and revealed that there was a ram caught in the thicket that would be used for the sacrifice instead. Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Not only did God provide, but in verses 17 and 18, he pronounced a blessing over Abraham's life. The Lord told him that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. The same God who provided for Abraham and blessed him is alive and at work in our lives today. If, y'all, if you'll endure the stretching process, you'll see firsthand that God is still Jehovah Jireh. He still provides. He still makes ways. He still heals. He still restores. And he still sets free. If you want to see him work, then stretch. Stretch, how do we stretch? We stretch, stretch your faith, stretch beyond limited thinking, stretch beyond fear, stretch beyond worry, and stretch beyond the walls those negative voices have erected in your mind. And how do you stretch? You simply put your confidence in the Lord. You walk by faith and not by sight. You take actionable steps towards what you believe God is saying. You can do, be, and have, knowing that in his way and in his timing, he'll come through for you. To encourage you to endure the stretching, to get the blessings, I'm going to close with this. 1 Peter 5.10 And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Put your faith in the Lord. Know that he is faithful to deliver. Expect him to do the miraculous in your life. So that was a little something that he gave me. Uh, Let's all stand and we'll go to the Lord in prayer and then the praise team can come up. So I want us to do something real quick. I want us just to stretch a little bit. Let's stretch, get ready to worship the Lord. I know that's a little odd and different, but (laughs) let's stretch, get ready, um, and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your spirit that we already feel in this place. We thank you for our pastors, God. God, I know uh, it can't be easy sometimes being a pastor, but God, you're always there. You're always there to, to... Uh, encourage them and we want to encourage them today God we love them and we thank you for them we thank you for your son Jesus God who went to Calvary when he didn't have to God to save us from our sins and we pray God that as we go into the rest of this service God you would just help us to step aside and just steal away into your presence and not worry about those storms around us God but to stretch our faith and look to you and help us uh, as we go through the rest of this day and bless us in Jesus name amen